Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to us about something that is very very vital, you know, because it's important that we know what I'm going to talk to you guys about now. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to validate a result. How do we validate a result in pathology laboratory? Before we continue, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Lobodo. I'm a biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So let's get into this. First of all, I want you to know that result validation is so vital in pathology laboratory. Remember that one of the primary roles of a biomedical scientist is to validate a result. What does it really mean to validate a result? First of all, remember, we have auto-validation, we have manual validation. The one that is commonly associated with a biomedical scientist is a manual validation. In most cases in pathology laboratory, the analyzers, the interface, okay, has been connected with the, um, the laboratory information management system in such a way that if a result is within the targeted range, okay, it will auto-validate. You are not going to see that result. It will just auto-validate and go into the patient record, okay? So the ones that a biomedical scientist will see on the result, on the result validation queue, will be the one that the analyzer or maybe the interface wants you to investigate. So what it then means is that to validate a result means to investigate a result. To validate, to validate a sample result or to authorize a result or to release a result means you have to investigate that result. What are you investigating? You are investigating to make sure that the number of tests, number one, you want to see is this result consistent with the patient? Number two, if it is not consistent with the patient, what are the other factors that can actually affect it? So you may not, number three, you then need to look at other factors like maybe pre-analytical phase. You can look at maybe analytical phase or as the case may be. So when we validate a result, there's a number of things that will take. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a tips on how to validate a result. Even if you go for interview and they ask you a question, how do you validate a result or what do you mean by result validation? At least you can be able to know. Before I continue, result validation means you are investigating that result. What you want to confirm is the result consistent with the patient. If it is consistent with the patient, happy days, you release the result. However, if, the, if it is not consistent with the patient, you then need to investigate what are the other factors that could make that patient to have such a result? That is where we can investigate something like maybe pre-analytical phase, like maybe how the sample was collected. We can look at something like run sample in tube, like premix sample. As the case may be, there's a number of things we can look at, okay? All samples and all of that. So what, when you start investigating all these factors, what it means that you are checking this result I'm seeing, it appears inconsistent with the patient. I hope that makes sense, okay? Now, Another thing that we do is that when we investigate the pre-analytical, we may also need to investigate the analytical and find out maybe is there any problem during the process of analyzing the patient result. Now, let me go straight to the point. How do you then validate a result? I'm going to tell you step by step how a result should be val validated or how a result should be authorized or released. Number one, when you when the analyzer process a sample, Analyzer, analyzer process sample and it trapped on your queue on your screen so you are looking at it on your laboratory information management system either at the first level uh, validation or second level validation what you need to do is to first of all look at the result once you see the result if you suspect there's something wrong with the result if you think that the result is not normal okay what you do is that you now log on to your laboratory information management system and you check the patient record. The laboratory information management system has the patient previous lab results. So you now check the patient previous lab results to see how consistent is the result you are seeing with the patient previous lab result. If maybe it's a new patient, you don't have the previous result. Okay, what well, it then means that you can then proceed to check what are the diagnosis of the patient. That means when you look at the laboratory information management system, you are going to see a documented note from the doctor, from the clinician, as the case may be. Okay, maybe from his or her GP. So when, from what the person documents can give you idea of maybe whether the result is consistent or not. Now, and that documentation can show you things like maybe where the person has traveled to, it can show you things like maybe the symptom that the patient has presented. It can also show you things like maybe the suspected, the query thing, the query cases, or the suspected cases of what the doctor or the clinician may be suspected. That can help you to make a final judgment. 
I hope that makes sense. So I've said, you are going to look at, is the result consistent with the patient's previous result? Now, if you check it and it is consistent, okay, then you can release the result. But if it is not consistent, you then need to investigate, you know, other factors. One other factor you can investigate is, where, you know, the, what is the notes, what is the, um, the, the documented, what is the documented note, okay, from the clinician regarding the patient on that day, okay, that can, or even previously, that can help you to know whether it is consistent or not. Okay, now I make this point because sometimes you can get a patient that maybe that is the first time the person is visiting, and because that is the first time the person is visiting, we don't have the previous record. What that can guide you when you validate such a result is maybe the documented note of what the doctors have said regarding the patient, what is the symptoms, what has the person been, where have the person traveled to, and so on and so forth. What are, you know, the detail of what that led the person to come to the hospital or to be admitted to the hospital or to, to go to GP. That detail that has been put in that collaborative information management system, which you can assess, by the way, once you assess it and you look at it, it can help you to know whether the result you are looking at is consistent or not. However, when you come, to, when you come to the fact that that is the first time the patient is visiting, it's always important that even though you want to validate the result based on the information you can see, it's also important that you ask them to repeat it so they can confirm the result where possible. So now. If you have checked it is consistent, then you can release it. Now, what about a situation whereby you've checked the previous result? It is not consistent. Now, what you can then do is investigate what are the other factors. So that is where you can now look at the pre-analytical phase. Okay, has the sample been clotted? Is it underfilled? Is it hemolyzed? Is it old sample? And so on and so forth. So that is how we can go about validating a result. I hope that makes sense. For example, some of you guys have gone for an interview and they give you a result that shows a discrepancy on someone's previous result. Maybe it is like discrepancy on MCV. It means a lot of things, okay? So, or maybe you get a discrepancy or maybe things like hemoglobin. It means a lot of things. So, what it means, let's say something like hemoglobin. Someone hemoglobin is, a, is 80 today. Now, you check it again. Uh, uh, you, you, we want to validate the result again next time. And you see that the hemoglobin is 60. You need to investigate it. What does that mean? In that investigation, you might find that the person has been bleeding. You might also find out that the sample is clotted. You might find that the, the sample has been diluted and so on. So these are the things that you look at. So in sample validation, once you see the result, you look at the patient previous record, previous result. Is it consistent? If it is consistent, that explains your question, then you can release the result. If it is not consistent, you will now investigate other factors that could lead to that. And that is where you can look at both the pre-analytical and analytical phase to see what the, what the factors might be that could interfere with that result. Whether it is in biochemistry, in any pathology, in any department or pathology laboratory, this is how we validate a result. Once we see any result that we want to validate, we check it whether it is consistent with the patient or not. If it is consistent, we release it. If it is not consistent, we now look at other factors because even if it is not consistent, does not mean it is not consistent with the patient on that day. Does that make sense? Okay. So what you then need to do is to investigate, you know, what could make the result to just change. So that your investigation, from your investigation, you might then end up, if you think it's consistent following your investigation, you release it. If you think it's not consistent, obviously you are going to reject it or you can ask for a repeat. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Think about someone who has a hemoglobin of 80 and you did, you did it, there's a sample again, and you're getting hemoglobin of 100. That's a discrepancy. But when you look at, when you investigate it, you might see the person has been transfused. That explains the result. I hope that makes sense. Or imagine something like maybe hemoglobin of 100, and you look at it, you look at, you come again, uh, and they send the sample again, and you're getting the hemoglobin of 80. You look at it, you investigate it, the person has been bleeding. That explains it. Or it has been diluted. That explains it. Now, again, in terms of the biochemistry, like I have mentioned on my previous video, maybe you see high potassium or high sodium. You look at it, it's not consistent with the patient. You investigate it, you find that there's a sample contamination. So these are how you validate a result or authorize or release result. In summary, result validation needs to investigate a result that you obtain in the laboratory, whether it is consistent with the patient or not. If it is consistent, you then validate. If it is not consistent, you then investigate other factors that could lead to that. Whether it is pre-analytical factors or analytical factors or as the case may be. Now, another thing that can help you to investigate is to look at 
the documented note from the doctors or the clinicians, GP as the case may be, and that can help you to be able to make a decision whether to validate the result. Finally, I'm going to say, when in doubt in validating results, you ask for a repeat to confirm what you are saying. I hope that makes sense. You know, let me know what you think about the video. Once again, thank you very much for listening. Please, can I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you all the best till I come back away again.